So this is my 16,000 watt grid tie system. And grid tie systems are nice because they are super cheap and produce a lot of power. But the big downside is if the grid were to go down, the power output of this system will be zero. And there are two ways to solve this problem. Either I could buy Tesla power walls and have an AC coupled backup system, or I could buy a Solarc inverter and run my own battery backup system for my house. But those options are very expensive and the likelihood of the grid going down for more than a couple weeks is very, very unlikely. So to save money, I have a grid tie system and then I have a separate backup system in my trailer. And my trailer system can actually power everything I need in the house and it was much cheaper than either a Tesla Powerwall or a Solar Converter with my own battery backup system. And the majority of this power goes to powering my air conditioner and my Tesla car. And this produces 90 to 100 kilowatt hours a day, depending on the season. But to survive, I don't need that much power. So today we're gonna imagine what I would do if the grid were to go down. So first we have the utility trailer and this has 800 watts of solar and a 6.5 kilowatt inverter inside. And it has 13.6 kilowatt hours of power storage with lithium iron phosphate chemistry batteries. And the 800 watts that this provides is also supplemented with a second array. And the second array is 1,200 watts. So we have a combined 2,000 watt size array for this system. And we have an AC plug. So my critical loads in the house, which is a window air conditioner in my bedroom, and also the refrigerator downstairs, would both be powered off of this outlet. And that's my window air conditioner. So I would run an extension cord down from there. And the refrigerator is behind this door. So I would run a second extension cord into there. But I also need transportation and I have this this golf cart that can go 47 miles on a single charge. And this golf cart has its own trailer and I can actually go all the way to the hardware store with it, no problem. And I can also go around my neighborhood into a grocery store and I can charge it off of any of my three solar arrays in the backyard. And it also has its own flex panel on the roof. So this thing can charge all by itself without any solar panels or I can speed charge it with my utility trailer system. And currently this is how I charge my Tesla with my grid tie system with net metering. And lately the system's been producing 90 kilowatt hours a day. And if we divide that by 250 watt hours per mile, we get 360 miles of range for this Tesla every single day. But let's calculate how much it would be with my utility trailer with a 2000 watt array. So let's take 2000 watts and multiply it by five because that's how many hours of sunshine I'm getting at this latitude for my season, which equals 10 kilowatt hours. Now divide that by 250. So my utility trailer system can provide 40 miles of range for my Tesla every day, but that's assuming that I'm not powering my refrigerator and my air conditioner, and those will take up a lot of power. So it's not much, but in an emergency circumstance, it would actually be pretty awesome. Also, another side update, I removed the yellow logos and the yellow interior trim and now I have brushed aluminum logos that I added and man the car looks so cool I love this thing and this is my fridge but I'm not sure how much power it consumes in a day so let's try to find out and this is the RF28 R620 SR fridge what a joke of a name oh here we go 725 kilowatt hours a year so 725 divided by 365, 1.9 kilowatt hours a day, which is only 20% of how much my trailers can produce in a day. And now we need to calculate how much our air conditioner would use. And on the site it says 600 kilowatt hours annually for the Mydia U air conditioner. 600 divided by 365 is 1.6 kilowatt hours a day. So with the fridge and the air conditioner, on average we would only need 3.6 kilowatt hours a day but I would up this to five because I'm in Las Vegas. And the temperature differential from the outside to the inside can be quite extreme. And it might even use more than this. It might be six kilowatt hours a day. And if that were the case, I would only get 16 miles from my Tesla. But it serves as a nice backup system, especially if the power were down for a couple of days, I could run lights and other things, no problem. So this is a great backup system, but if the grid were down for months, this would be a pain in the butt. I'm not running extension cords. So let's talk about what I would do in that situation. First, I would park my solar trailers next to my 
workshop. This is the sub panel for my workshop. I would install a transfer switch and run this huge cable I have for 240 volts. And I would install two inverters in my solar trailer that are capable of a split phase output and I would supply this panel. And this would enable me to run my mini split 240 volt air conditioner heat pump. And then I would throw a bed into the loft and then I would live up there because my workshop also has a bathroom and a sink. So I've been thinking about that. I could rent out this whole house and live in this workshop because I don't need that much. I really don't care. The only reason I use the house is for the kitchen. But if I eat out every day, I could probably just rent out that house. I literally don't use any of those rooms, guys. The only reason I bought this house was for this workshop. I could not find anywhere else that I could build a large video studio workshop except for this house in particular. And this is my dream. All I wanted in life was a workshop. I could put my Tesla over there, charge it off of the sub panel. I could throw some more solar panels out there because I have stacks and stacks of solar panels on the property. And instead of 2000 watt array, I could easily build a 4000 watt array. So I could do everything in this workshop. This workshop is my ultimate backup. But if the grid were down for like three days, I would just run some extension cords. It's super easy, takes seconds, and it would run all of my critical loads in that house. All I need is to be cool enough during the night to sleep and so that my food doesn't rot. And that's about it. If the grid were down for multiple months, I would turn this into its own stationary system and I would have a water collection system. I also have a water tank and water treatment options. And I actually bought all of that stuff to prepare for whatever will happen in the future. So this workshop is my backup home. This thing is everything to me. And I think overall, this is the best way to do it for saving money because I think it's fine to have a grid tie system because they are dirt cheap and I have to power my Tesla and these massive air conditioners out here in Vegas. And sadly, I still need to deal with the rules of the power company. But if the grid were to go down, I have lots of options. I can easily run my life. I did it for nine years living off grid. I could set up a system in the next 20 minutes and be good to go. I already have systems built in here on the floor next to me right now that I could set up and power whatever I want. So in my opinion, it's not that big of a deal. And one of the reasons I moved to Las Vegas is the number of natural disasters is very low in this area. And some of my neighbors actually run the utilities and they tell me how much redundancy they have built into the systems. So I feel pretty confident that the grid will probably not go down anytime soon. But yeah, I like to save money. I don't want to spend money. So in my opinion, this is like the best of both worlds. So please let me know what you guys think. I also have the solar shed at the old house. I just remembered that. I could run everything off of that thing too. Also, it's fun having a backup off-grid system to play with. You can always add upgrades and rewire it. And it's a lot of fun to have them. So anyways, that's what I'm using. I hope you guys liked the video and I will talk to you soon. Bye.